Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda, and I'm an orthodontist. I'm also the CEO of Straight Smile Solutions. We help dentists all over the world understand orthodontics better. We work with all systems, braces, appliances, and brands of aligners, and we support all systems and brands. This video will share content that is the property of Invisalign and Align Technology. We've made this video upon request of 40,000 plus doctors, subscribers, and followers to help them achieve better outcomes with their Invisalign cases. We do not work for Align Technology. All opinions expressed in this video are the opinions of Straight Smile Solutions and not Align Technology. Thank you to Align Technology for continuing to support us educating and helping their doctors and letting us share this video around the world through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, and all of our social media platforms. Together, we unite to make more smiles. If you have questions or concerns about this video, please contact us directly at www.straightsmilesolutions.com. Enjoy the video. Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we're going to talk about managing discomfort with orthodontics, specifically braces. What do you do? Home care. Um, how do you take care of things? And I know when you go to your orthodontic appointment and you get your braces installed, they go over a lot of stuff real quick and they might give you some home care instructions and maybe a video to watch, but it's very overwhelming. And you get home and you're like, oh my goodness, what do I do now, right? So my suggestion is to make sure you have the following things ready to go before you even have your ortho braces installed. I would just have the stuff at home ready to go. They're probably going to give you a take home goodie bag kit, but you need more than just a little bit. So might as well go buy it ahead of time and I'll kind of show you what you need. Hang on. So this is a kit that I got at CVS. Oh, goodness, you can see it right there. Okay. Um, but you can buy these anywhere. Um, it just has the basic stuff. It has um, proxy brushes. It has wax. It has some floss. And it has floss threaders. The other thing that I think you need is something like this. There's also a, another brand called Oro Base. Aura Base or Oro Base, B-A-S-E. But the main thing that you're looking for is you're looking for, you don't want just like um, the kind of oral analgesic that just numbs. You want one that's going to actually bond to coats why it heals. See that? Coats why it heals. Long lasting protection. Some of the other ones that are out there, like or a gel, is going to go ahead and just going to numb and it's going to just make your whole mouth taste nasty and numb it and it's going to be gone in five minutes. This one actually creates like a band-aid that sticks to your gums or your lips or your cheeks. So you want coats why it heals. That's the magical thing. Okay, so this was about $5. I think this was about $6. You can buy them everywhere. You can buy them on Amazon. You can get them at any major drugstore. So I'm just going to show you how to use these real briefly. Okay, so let's go back to my friend here. I'm going to go ahead and open up this box and show you how everything works and what's in it. See, it comes in a little bag. You're going to need many of these. You're going to need one for your school backpack. You're going to need one for home. You're going to need maybe one for the car. You're going to need a lot. Okay, so let's show you what's in here. Those are floss threaders. They go with floss. You can buy these all together. Personally, I think these are like uncomfortable, these plastic ones. Even though they are reusable, they're cheaper. I don't like them. When I had braces, I never used them. I like one that's called Super Floss, um, like Superman, but Super Floss. And it's all in one. It's so comfy and easy to use. But this is the cheap version, just to let you know. Okay, so we got that. Okay, the other thing you're going to need a lot of is proxy brushes, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. Find the one that's comfortable for you, okay? And you're going to need a lot of wax. And um, there's another brand of wax called or Orto Dots, O R T O Dots. That one actually sticks better and it lasts longer. This is just your traditional beeswax. This one is cheaper. Um, it's okay if you swallow it, but just letting you know there's other different types, so you want to find the right one for you. So wax is the most critical. So let's start with wax because wax is your best friend. This stuff will melt if you leave it in a hot car or hot backpack in the sun. So you need a lot of them, like a lot. Um, and possibly the first couple weeks, you might use many of these. So I would just have them ready to go. Um, open it up. It comes in these like strips. Take a size off about the size of a little pea. Okay. Heat it up, mush it up. Make it the size of a tiny little itty bitty pea or like a corn kernel like that, okay, and just press it on whatever's bothering you. So let's say this hook is bothering you. Just press it on. It's okay. It's fine. It's just beeswax. You can leave it on. 
leave it on while you eat, leave it on while you sleep. But every time you brush your teeth, you should pick off all the old wax because there's going to be plaque underneath it. Brush your teeth and put fresh pieces on. So at least twice a day, you're pulling all the old wax off and putting all new wax on. Okay, that's really, really important. I would definitely be very liberal with your wax and don't get me wrong I've seen people do this before <laughs> take the whole strip and just press it on it looks a little junky but you know you got to do what you got to do especially at nighttime because that's the time when you get all beat up when you're sleeping on your face and stuff like that okay I mean that looks bad but there's nothing wrong with doing that at night so if I were a parent I would buy many of these before you even start you're probably going to get one from your orthodontist you're going to need way more and these are only like two dollars a pack so just buy them in bulk okay all right, so that's wax. Wax is your friend. You can never use too much, and you'll probably be done with the wax in a few weeks. You'll get used to it. Here is your floss threader. Okay, it's like a little Christmas tree brush. They come in all different shapes and sizes. You have to get under the wires to brush, okay? And you also have to get in between the teeth to brush. Can you see that? You got to get all around there, and this really helps you clean all around the nooks and crannies of your brackets and your, your bands and all that okay and these can also be bent see that okay it's for easier access to places so these can be washed and reused but i think after a week or two you're gonna if you wash it you're gonna have to throw them away and get a new one so you're gonna need a lot of those all right last but not least is kind of the hardest part which is the floss threaders get your regular piece of floss let me move this so you guys can see this any type of floss will do whatever one you like Okay, remember when you do floss, it should be at least a foot, foot and a half long because you need a lot of slack. And then you get your floss threader. Again, if you buy the super floss, you don't have to do this. You can just already pre-threaded. Just thread it through like a needle and thread. I can do that. I'm doing it through the lens, so. Okay, and now you go ahead and uh, let me get this wax off. Go away, wax. I'm going to show everyone how to do it. Okay, so um, usually I go from gum side to a top of the tooth side and go under the wire, okay? And then I hold on to one end boop, and pull the blue part off. And now I'm under the wire. Can you see that? See, I can actually lift this up. And now that I'm under the wire, I can just floss like regular, floss all around, left, right, okay? Pull it out and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. About 28 places you're gonna have to repeat this. It is a super hassle, and I'll be honest, when I had braces, I wasn't so great about doing it. I've only had one cavity in my life. Um, I think my parents were kind of cheap. Hopefully they don't listen to this video. <laughs> they only bought me so much super floss. They told me to quote reuse it, which was disgusting. Don't reuse floss. Um, so I only got to floss once a week. Just I should have just told my dentist to give me more, but they wouldn't buy it for me. Um, so I got cavities. Only time I ever got cavities was during braces because I didn't floss every day. You need to floss every day. Set aside 10 minutes a day to floss. And once you get good at it, you can do it without looking in the mirror. You can do it while you watch TV. It's kind of gross, but you can do it. So you need to floss every day, everywhere, as well as use your proxy brush, okay, and your regular toothbrush and all that. And then we talked about the aura base, how that works, putting it on whatever area is irritated on the inside of your lips or your cheeks, okay, as needed, anytime. It's really, really important so that things can heal. You don't want to get an infection. So after a few weeks, it should all be better with your home care and everything should be better. And of course, you should be mindful of um, brushing, not only brushing, but eating the rules, not eating crunchy stuff and all of that. And I have another video about discomfort from moving teeth, what to take with your Motrin and your Tylenol. You should watch that video. If you can't find it, let me know and I will give it to you. All right, thanks so much. And we're here today to talk about my favorite things for oral hygiene. Whether you have aligners or braces or whatever you have, these are some of my favorite tools here. So I kind of want to go over what I have and why I recommend them. And I apologize, this is my daughter's bathroom and it's not that clean. There's nail polish everywhere. But in any case, this is an active, this is the stuff we use in our house. So we have a Sonicare toothbrush. We have a cordless water pick. We have ACT always act only. Um, 
mouthwash because it has fluoride in it. Nothing, not Listerine, none of the other ones, no scope because it doesn't have alcohol and doesn't have essential oils. So it won't affect the braces or the attachments or stain or denature your appliances. Um, a tongue scraper and a tiny little itty bitty toothbrush as well to get into those crevices. Um, of course, floss as well. I don't know why that's not here. But in any case, these are the things we like. Um, obviously, you're going to use your Sonicare twice a day for two minutes minimum. Your water pick, you can take it to the shower with you um, and clean all your teeth and your aligners out if you have um, aligners. Uh, the mouthwash, you can actually dilute it and put it into your water pick. Tongue scrapers should be done at least two times a day. And the itty bitty toothbrush to get all around those little aligners or inside your teeth. So hopefully that helps. These are the things I recommend. Uh, it can be a little bit of an investment. The cool thing about the water pick is that you can um, exchange the tips. The same thing with the Sonicare. So you can share it with multiple people as long as you pull your brush head or your tip off. So um, it is an investment of a couple hundred dollars, but you will have much healthier teeth afterwards and have better outcomes with your braces or aligner therapy. So in any case, hopefully that helps. These are things I would go by before you start your ortho treatment. I wanted to address something that I've been seeing going on in the Facebook groups. Um, about allergies and allergies to braces, allergies to clear aligners, allergies to Invisalign. So I'm just going to speak from the research that I've read and from my experience in private practice and clinical practice. Um, braces, yeah, there can be real allergies to that, especially nickel. So if you're somebody who has allergies to jewelry, you know, watches, earrings, most likely necklaces, you get redness, you have to wear pure gold. Um, jewelry, then you probably shouldn't go with braces, to be honest, because there is nickel, you know, in brackets, there is nickel in wires. Yes, there's nickel free wires, but it's not going to work very well. Um, it's just not, it's going to be real old school. So better for you to go with clear aligners in that case. Um, it is possible to do clear aligners totally metal free. So I'd recommend going metal free. Um, I've definitely seen some patients who've done braces, didn't mention a nickel allergy and their gums and their lips are just puffy, you know, and then you're going to have to upgrade to Invisalign. It's going to get be a lot more expensive. So you might as well just be honest on the front end. Um, if you have a mild allergy, maybe you're okay, but it's a risk. So personally, I prefer if I know somebody has an actual nickel allergy to just do Invisalign or clear aligners. Um, and in that case, I hope that doctors are not charging extra. I don't think that's okay. So, um, so that is nickel. Um, and then what else? What else? latex. So latex would be the other major allergy that I see. Remember, clear liners are non-latex. Um, BPA-free, they should be. Oh, let's, let's put it this way. The ones that are in the U.S. Um, are non-latex and BPA-free, but you should ask, especially if they're doing off-brand or in-house aligners. I've seen some doctors using stuff that's imported from China, so you want to know exactly the MSDS, what company they're using. I can tell you that the branded ones, Invisalign, Clear Correct. Anything made with Zenduraflex is non-latex BPA free. Um, there should be no allergies to that. I've never ever seen one. Um, the only thing that sometimes can happen with curl liners is sometimes when you get them, maybe there's a coating on them. So you brush them, floss them, brush them, floss them, brush them, soak them, you know, in, their dent in your cleaning tablet and usually it's fine. It's usually more related to whatever you're using to clean them with if you're getting some type of inflammation. So it might be better to just clean them with simple water you know, than an actual like cleaning crystal, cleaning solution, cleaning spray, cleaning foam or anything like that. Some people even use like um, just hypoallergenic dish soap, you know, like flavor free stuff, the same stuff you use to clean your dishes. That might be the best thing to use. I know that sounds a little weird, but if you're concerned, you don't want to use toothpaste because it tends to scratch it. So um, that would be my suggestion, but no, you should not have any allergies to any clear aligners. I've never, ever seen one. As far as I know, some people say there's reported allergies, but honestly, I think it's related to either the product not being a branded product or the product, whatever they're using to clean it most likely. Right. So maybe using different floss or something like that, but but you could have latex allergy. So latex allergy could have come from the gloves that they're using, the retractors, um, there are latex ties on the braces. Yes, they can use metal ties, but again, this is super old school and probably nobody's going to do that. You could use self ligating brackets. If you have a latex allergy, that's probably a good idea to ask for that. They're probably going to charge a little bit extra. Maybe they won't. I usually do because it's a lot more expensive on my end. Um, that would be a suggestion. 
but you might still need power chain and power chain will have latex. There's no way around it. So again, if you have latex allergy, just do clear aligners. Sometimes clear liner treatment does need rubber bands. So they do sell non-latex rubber bands. However, they are like way less efficient. You're definitely gonna have to wear them 22 hours a day and you're gonna have to wear them a lot more than someone that's using latex. So if you're just trying to be difficult, you know, <laughs> I think it really comes down to what happens. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I have a latex allergy. Well, what happens? Oh, I don't know, nothing really. I mean, yeah, if your lips are swelling up, yes, that's an allergy, that's a problem. You know, cause ultimately the more you're exposed, eventually your throat's gonna swell up. So that's not okay. Um, so, I mean, a lot of times when people tell me they have a latex allergy, I'll ask to talk to their allergist because, and I want to see the results of the IgE testing, um, because a lot of times it's not a real allergy, you know, and we don't want to be, you know, giving you a worst outcome because you may or may not have a real allergy. Anyone that has a real allergy should be going to an allergist. So that's my suggestion. Come in with that documentation from your allergist showing that you have a real allergy and then the doctor really shouldn't charge you any extra. I don't think that would be right. So today we're going to talk about a little bit more about orthodontic emergencies, specifically what happens when a patient swallows something like a bracket or a broken wire or part of a broken appliance. Now, this is going to happen. This is just part of orthodontics. It will happen and it'll happen pretty frequently. Things break and sometimes they fall out of their mouth and a lot of times they eat them. <laughs> so um, I've had this happen, goodness, at least hundreds of times and I've never had a problem. But occasionally you'll get a parent that calls you kind of panicked. And this is kind of my verbiage for that, which would be, First of all, I'm super sorry that happened. You know, um, how about you come in and let me check the area and make sure there's nothing else loose or broken. That would be the best thing for you to do. Um, if it's been more than a few days and they don't have any stung pain or any bloody stool or anything like that, they should be fine. Cramping, anything like that. If it just happened, I usually tell them to observe for, you know, 24 to 72 hours. And um, if they're feeling discomfort or if they have a um, bloody stool, then they should go to the ER or to urgent care. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those things. Um, like I said, I've never experienced it. It's especially in a light wire um, or it's a bracket. I'm not worried at all. Um, if it's like something sharper then maybe, which is part of the reason why I don't like fixed appliances because these things tend to happen more with fixed um, than just with braces of removables. It's just a little more risk. So your team needs to be more prepared to handle these things if you're doing fixed appliances. Only time I've personally ever had to deal with an emergency visit with an orthodontic patient was a fixed appliance of some sort and the patient got into a car crash. And I guess the ER wasn't like a major ER where they had like an OMFS or oral maxillofacial surgeon or a GPR on staff and they didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I think I had to go, this is a long time ago, I had to go clip something out, bring my pliers, but um, you're probably fine. But the main thing is just to have a really calm voice and then see if you can see them in office, you know, just to make sure nothing else is loose. And then the main thing you gotta do is you gotta chart it and then you gotta follow up, you know, give them a call in 24, 48, 72 hours and document. Um, make sure that there's a, a open line of communication. You don't wanna just forget them. And make sure if you're office staff that the doctor knows. That's really, really important. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that's probably a little overdue, but now that I'm starting to get a lot more doctors who are starting to do straight wire since we launched our digital straight wire course, um, eventually brackets are going to break, right? It's just kind of par for course. It's going to come with anytime you do straight wire or braces, kids, adults, sometimes there's going to be random broken brackets. And the occasional one here and there is not a problem, but if it's chronic, um, it's really gonna slow down the treatment and or completely stall the treatment. You're gonna be spinning your wheels. So it's really important that you learn to understand the why behind bracket breakage. Um, is it things you need to improve on your end? Is it the things that the patient needs to improve on their end? If it's chronically a patient problem, then it sounds like your team probably isn't, or you aren't, you know, talking about compliance and what's expected of them and what, what they can do and not do, right? So um, anyways, we could probably talk about all this today for like a good 30 minutes, but I just wanted to talk about a few high level points in terms of understanding the why behind the bracket breakage. So the first thing I do um, is I generally have a 24 hour window. 
So I let patients know whenever I put brackets on or put a new bracket on that, hey, if you have any problems with this bracket, any breakage in the next 24 hours, I need you to give me our office a call immediately. I need to know. You need to report it within 24 hours because any breakage within 24 hours is probably on your end, something you did wrong. We can go over all those points. And that's that's a problem. If your team or you is having breakage, you got to identify what the problem is because it's going to keep happening. Um, if you don't, if you don't fix it. So I would want to know, and any phone call that you get beyond that 24 hour point is now the point, most likely the problem of the patient. It's something the patient's doing wrong. And remember if the patient's doing, a lot of patients are doing things wrong. It's your policy, your compliance policy and everything like that, that you need to work on because you know, that still isn't normal, but in any case, so let's go over beyond the 24 hour thing. So let's say whether it's pre 24 hours or post 24 hours. The next question I'm going to ask once I need to know when it happened, I want to know how it happened. So they may have, you know, some feedback. Oh yeah. Sometimes they'll straight out say, you know, um, yeah, sorry. I was eating a taco, you know? Okay. Problem solved, you know, but if they're like, gee, I don't know. It just happened. Then that's where you need to dig into it a little bit more. And then you need to ask to see the bracket. So actually have the patient bring the bracket in when they, well, obviously if they broke a bracket. You want to um, reuse that bracket so you can save money. So you want them to make sure they save it. But you can ask them on the phone, hey, can you turn your bracket over? Do you have it in your hand? Can you tell me a little bit, is the, is the glue on the back of the bracket or is the glue still on the tooth or both? And the answers to that question will pretty much tell you which direction. Now, I would make sure you don't tell the patient this kind of cheat sheet because then they're gonna just say whatever they wanna say, right? Because they're gonna learn. But um, so let's start with glue on tooth because that's a little bit easier. If all the glue is on the tooth and the patient feels it, it feels lumpy and bumpy on the tooth and they look at the bracket, the bracket that they saved and there's no glue on the bracket, that makes it pretty easy to isolate what happened. So usually in that case, if there's glue on the tooth and not on the bracket, then that means that could be a light cure issue. That's always an issue. Like if you have a light cure, sometimes they start you know, dying out. Um, and they need calibration or you need to replace it and you can still see light. And if it's not the right power, you know, or, you know, whatever intensity, um, then you can have breakage and you wouldn't even know. So that's always an issue. You should always keep an eye on light cal calibration, especially if you're using one consistent light. Um, or even if you're using more than one. Okay. Number two could be you use too heavy of a wire, you know, like it was really displaced and you tried to put in a 16. Yeah, it may not break the second you, try, you tie it in, but it might break later that night or the next day. And if so, that was you. Um, number three, someone could have been like a little heavy handed at tie in, you know, a little too much force, a little too rough. Sometimes it won't ping off that very second. It'll ping off a few hours later. Um, of course, patient diet compliance is usually the main thing. Usually in this situation, it's something they ate. Um, or they got, you know, trauma, they got hit, something like that. They bumped, they fell. Or it could be a bite interference where the way the brackets go on for ideal, um, a tooth is hitting a bracket. And again, these are things you have to check, but you have to check excursive or extrusive movements as well. So those are all pretty much things that you did wrong or the patient did wrong. So either way, you know, and, and you can kind of ask leading questions, but if they're super adamant, I have no idea how this happened, you know, just happened, then be thinking the other ones. Okay, so let's go to the one that's a little more difficult, which is where the glue is still on the bracket, not at all on the tooth. Tooth feels flush, nothing on it. In that case, it's still probably something you did. So it could be improperly etching, the duration, the stuff's contaminated, it could be isolation, they're getting, there's blood, there's plaque, there's, um, you know, there's saliva, you're not using like a NOLA or something. Um, what else? Sometimes it's happened to me before that, an assistant to prep uses like the little normal profi cups, but those have like oils in them. So that will prevent it. So you don't want to use that. If you need to prep first, I would just use plain pumice and water, mix it up yourself. They sell some cups like that, or just use a dry toothbrush. That's totally fine. Um, or anything like that. Also even toothpaste before bonding can cause that problem. We're using ac or Listerine or something like that. Also whitening too close to your bonding appointment. That's another thing. Um, Obviously priming, we talked about that, or the primer gets contaminated. So you have to read the directions on the primer carefully. 
um, because some primers have to be air dried, air thinned, or light cured. So make sure you're using the right one. And, and if your team has worked in other offices or if you change brands, they may not understand that. Of course, light curing improperly, there's 20 second lights, 40 second lights, 10 second lights, three second lights, and the calibration can be off too. So just making sure you're getting it from all different angles and stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So, so many things, you know, over time, eventually you'll, you'll learn to be able to figure these things out and, and uh, improve things on your own. Hey guys, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And I'm here live today in Honolulu, Hawaii. No, this is not a backdrop. It's a fantastically hot, sticky day. And I managed to get this awesome recording space. So I'm gonna knock out a bunch of demo videos and unboxing videos today. And today is one that I've been holding on to. I'm so excited. I was like not even sleeping last night because I was so excited they came in the mail. So I wanna thank so much Great Lakes Orthodontics Laboratory. Um, I also wanna thank Seven Seas. And I want to thank you, Concept. And I want to thank them all for allowing me to make more demo videos about their products. Again, I'm not compensated in any way about these products. Um, I appreciate it when vendors send me their cool products and I'll do an unboxing and just kind of open them live and tell you what I see. So hang on. Without further ado, I'm going to grab the stuff. Okay. So today we have the U, more from the U Concept family of products. You may have seen some of my earlier videos on the baby ones. So I, I did a demo video on U Start, U Kitty. Um, you trainer, um, you class three, you class two, and now we're talking about you brace. It's the last in the family of seven C's products. They are distributed by Great Lakes Orthodontic Laboratory. At the moment, Q4 2020 price points around $50 per um, appliance. They are class two medical devices. So you're going to need as a dentist, you're going to need to order them from Great Lakes. So I'm going to tell you all about this product. I've seen it in action. I've seen a lot of results. Um, but I'm going to tell you how I recommend using it. And I think you have nothing to lose with that price point um, for the doctor because you can use this with your treatment. And if the patient ends up not liking it, um, what do you have to lose for $50, right? It can only help. So um, the U-Brace is the last in the family of products. It is meant to be worn over appliances like braces or aligners. No, you can't wear it if you have elastics or like a Herbst or a Mara. It's just regular braces or um, regular aligners can be worn over it. So it's a little bit more troughed out compared to the other appliances it can fit over it. So, um, the U brace comes in a soft and a hard or comes in a soft or a firm. So this is the soft right here. It's definitely very flexible. You can see I'm very easily doing this. I would almost, so we call these myofunctional trainers. So they're training your lips, your tongue to go the right way, right? Um, they can also help to improve airway at nighttime because you're going to, in order to keep them in, you're going to be strengthening your muscles and nasal breathing instead of mouth breathing if you are a mouth breather. Also, it's going to remind, it has a gentle reminder to make sure when you swallow to the hand, not have your tongue do a tongue thrust. So if you're a tongue thruster, this is a great product for tongue thrusters. Um, best way to train a tongue thrust is to exercise, right? And yes, you can... For those of you who are myofunctionals or OMTs, this is a great product, but also um, you can wear it at nighttime and do your exercises. So I think it's great. And I'm not being sponsored in any way. So I'm just excited to demo this product um, live. So this is the soft version. Um, this is meant to also help to correct class two. So it's putting the bite into an edge to edge position. So you know, theoretically, if you wore it long term, you might stimulate mandibular development. So more in a growing child than in an adult. But this can be worn in kids or adults. Um, in, ki in adults, I think you're going to get more of an airway, um, a nasal breathing effect, um, malfunctional effect. In kids, you might also get some mandibular growth if that's what you're looking for. So keep that in mind. You may not want to use this for a class three patient. They do have a class three version, though. But that class three version is not meant to be worn over braces or aligners. So Right now, this is, I think I can see using this in a practice. If you want to get a jump start on class two correction or myofunctional correction, and you don't want to have to wait until you get into elastics or appliances or anything like that, you want to do it from day one when you get started with the braces while you're still in the leveling aligning phase. So that's why I think this is great. The soft one is meant to be the trainer so you can get used to wearing it. Um, it'll be a little more accommodating in the mouth. And then the hard one, hang on, let me grab it. I just dropped it 
is something that eventually you're going to work up to. I would definitely probably purchase both and work your way up to it. As it goes, you'll probably get bite throughs on this um, if you do have a Bruxer. So um, other fun facts about this, like I said, it has a little reminder for the tongue to go to the roof of the mouth to keep the tongue from going forward. It also has kind of a bumper here to keep the teeth from flaring, um, a lip bumper to keep the tipped teeth from proclining, the maxillary teeth. Um, on the bottom, it's got some space, you know, like I said, for braces, and it'll also prevent flaring of the lower teeth. So ultimately, I can see this being a major help thing, um, helpful device in terms of people who are tongue thrusting, who have oral habits, lip sucking, um, mouth breathing, or who are looking for that class two boost without having to wait for the class two elastics later in the treatment. And again, you can wear it over any aligners. Um, or any braces, as long as you don't have like a Laura or herbs or anything with pistons or elastics or anything in anything inner arch, um, inner oral. Um, you also probably can't wear it if you've got headgear or anything like that, or any type of funky extensions or anything like that. Just regular standard vanilla braces or aligners. And that's pretty much it. That is U brace, um, contact seven C's. This is what the case looks like. If you have any questions, um, I have demo videos on all the rest of the family of products from U brace, um, seven C's. So feel free to take a look and we're getting today. I am recording some information about what I like to send home with patients for orthodontic emergencies. Personally, what and I'm making this video for doctors, okay? So I'm inadvertently, I know patients will see this emergency handling video. You need to check with your doctor on how they want you to handle emergencies. So I'm going to talk about this at a high level in doctor talk. Please talk to your doctor if you have questions. Every doctor has different rules. I don't want to overstep telling you how I handle my emergencies. So I think you get that, anyways. Um, if anybody wants a copy of this, we do have this um, at our store. Um, it is something that we give out to our um, subscribers or our doctors who work with us at streetsmilesolutions.com. Got any questions, feel free to contact us, schedule a call. Anyways, um, so there's basic stuff I want patients to have to be able to handle emergencies so they're not calling me at three in the morning. Most orthodontic emergencies are pretty mild. Um, and easily corrected, um, both temporarily and permanently. But it also depends on what type of appliances you're delivering, um, contraptions you're delivering. If you're doing mostly removables, aligners, and basic, basic straight wire with all, all kind of all, without all kinds of mouse traps like um, distalizers and fixed appliances, um, bite jumpers like forces and her herps and stuff like that. Those have real emergencies, like real, real emergencies. Like I've had to go into the emergency room to handle emergencies, emergencies. So the more mouse traps you're delivering, you know, even though a lot of patients and parents ask for fixed appliances, the more your liability is, the more you actually need to have an emergency protocol. That means you may have to get up at three in the morning to see a patient and you may need to come in on the weekends to see a patient because it actually is a real emergency. Everything else, if you're doing mostly removables and easy breezy straight wire, isn't a, re a real emergency. It can be handled at home easily through a Zoom call. Anyways, um, supplies. So things that you should be sending home with your patient if you're doing fixed. Granted, this is kind of all bundled fixed and aligners, but um, I still think it's good. Wax, perhaps even a, um, if you're doing aligners, a nail buffer, like a clean nail buffer. Um, not buffer, but what do you guys call it? Nail file. Um, dental floss, I hope they have. Um, Pencil eraser, I actually like better than a Q-tip, but either way works. A clean one, of course. I actually like to give them like a fresh new pencil um, in the box. And no, it's not for writing. It's just for you to bend wires in if they're there. Something's pokey or like a Kobe tie or something like that. Salt water, easy to make. You just take a cup of water, put a teaspoon of salt, boil it until it melts in, um, let it cool, and then rinse with it. And do that fresh every day. Um, tweezers. Everyone should have tweezers. Of course, best to flame them or dip them in alcohol first. Um, proxy brush. You should be giving patients proxy brushes. If not, you can buy them at CVS Walgreens for a couple bucks. Toothpicks I don't love, but it's on there anyways. Um, Non-prescription pain reliever, acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Um, if they're having severe discomfort, that's coming from braces. Usually you don't get that with aligners. Um, I like the pulsing method. So 
I like to explain it to them, but in terms of actual dosage, I recommend that they talk to their physician just to make sure, um, because you don't know if they have liver issues or kidney issues. So whatever their pain relief that's recommended dosage by their physician, you can make it work for them. I like to pulse where they're going to take, say, for example, they get up at six in the morning if they're having discomfort or if they're trying to preemptively um, not have discomfort. You take your dose of ibuprofen, which for a teen is probably one Advil tab, one Motrin tab at 200 milligrams, most likely if they're more than 90 pounds or so. Um, if they're less, they're going to be taking kids um, liquid. Um, I don't think they're going to be taking 400 milligrams unless they're a couple hundred pounds. Um, and then three hours later, they're going to take their dose of Tylenol. You have to make sure that your total dosage is less than the recommended amount of dose that they have per day. So you're going to take your one 500 milligram acetaminophen at say 9 a.m. And then at noon, you're going to take your Motrin. And then at 3 p.m., you're going to take your acetaminophen. You get the idea, right? You pulse it. So that way that there is some overlap in the the way, and that it's a different way that pain management is managed from the NSAID to the, um, to the acetaminophen. So you really should have no discomfort if you're overlapping and pulsing like that. You should only do that during acute pain issues, like right when you got your braces on or right when you got your braces tightened or something like that. This shouldn't be something that you're doing always with braces or aligners. So that's how I like to manage things. Okay. So most common things that you're going to get are the lost little O-rings, lost ties. Those are not a huge emergency, but if the wire's flopping all around, um, if they still have it, they can put it back on um, with a tweezer. And that's what the tweezer is for. Okay. If it just came off, like usually there's four wings on your average mini twin bracket. If it just came off one of the wings, then they can use the tweezer to put it back on. And I have videos on how to put a tie on. There's a bazillion of them on the internet. I recommend that you make one and just tag it. And if you don't know how to do that, um, glad I have a lot of videos on how to do that. So super easy. You can have people at Fiverr make it for you for five bucks, as long as you send them the raw, the raw footage. And of course, if you're going to put that up on your YouTube, you need to get a social media release. I have a cop. I have a stock copy of that too. If you need that again, it's in my store. Um, pokey wire. Um, do they not have, oh, they're missing something important under tools and supplies. I would also add fingernail clippers to the tools and supplies clean. Um, and this might even be something that you want to put in a kit. You know, it's up to you. Um, but most people have those already. Dip them in alcohol. So for a pokey wire, you can use um, tweezers or a Q-tip just to bend it out of the way. Um, or you can just clip it with a fingernail clipper. It's not, it's pretty easy. But it depends on the gauge of the wire. So if it's a light night tie wire, you're 12, you're 14, you're 18, this should not be a problem. If it's a heavier night tie wire or a steel wire, um, they probably aren't going to be able to do that on their own. They're going to have to put a big ball of wax on the end of that um, because they're probably going to break a bracket if they try to do that. So this is where you're probably going to want to dial into your practice management system and see what type of wire they're in so you can advise them accordingly. Mouth sores, super easy. Of course, you need to take away whatever's causing the mouth sore. So if it's a pokey wire or a bracket, well, you can't take away the bracket. But um, initially, when you first get braces, you're probably going to use a lot of wax. And there's all kinds of different waxes that are out now. It's not just beeswax. There's also silicone wax. So find whatever works for you. There's these bumpers that go over it. You can't possibly give your patient everything that they need, you know, because it's whatever works for them. So they just need to go try some different things at Walmart, Walgreens, whatever, and see what works for them. But they should only need that the first few weeks. Some people more, some people less. Um, in addition, taking away what's causing the problem, they probably, I really like Aura Base and they have that right here under topical anesthetic. Um, Aura Gel I think is not as good. The base will actually form a film that actually sticks to your cheek and lasts like a band-aid. It'll last for a lot longer instead of temporarily just numbing. So the combination of the wax and the Aura Base works miracles in about 12 hours. So that should be fine. Um, discomfort. We talked about that already. Um, pulsing your, um, talking to the physician about the dosage, um, mouth sores, like canker sores, same thing. Um, warm salt water rinses, making sure there's no irritation and the aura base. If a bracket or band comes off, um, a lot of things can be done. You can either clip it with a clean fingernail clipper, or you can stabilize it with some wax until they can come in. I recommend that they save it in a Ziploc bag if it, so they don't choke on it or, you know, it's, it shouldn't cause any problem if they swallow it, you know, but um, just so you don't have to 
pay for a new one. <laughs> you just clean the glue off and put it back on, right? So, um, but yeah, those are the main things that are going to happen. Um, you know, just soreness, pokey things, and uh, just making sure that patients know what to do. So again, it's great if you create your own video with instructions, um, ideally with real patients in it and showing them what things look like and how to handle them. That way you're not getting all kinds of crazy um, questions. But you do want them if they've lost braces, especially or if they got pokey things to come in, they don't have to wait until their next appointment. If there's broken brackets, I've always made it a requirement that they give me a call so I can sk schedule a longer time, you know, so we're because I mean, obviously regular adjustment appointments are shorter than a fixing a bracket appointment and it makes everyone run late if they're coming in with broken brackets and they a lot of times kids don't tell their parents because they don't want to get in trouble but it's super important that they do because otherwise you don't have to fix that if they didn't let you know you can reschedule it for another time you know and which is going to be an inconvenient for them but it's only fair to all the patients that are running on time and everything else that um, that you run on time, you know? So um, it's just a matter of how you explain that. And they can go in and check their um, their braces. Usually they know if something's broken because it's flopping around, especially if they're in a light wire. But if they're in a heavier wire, they may not know that something's broken. So they should check their braces regularly. And if they're honestly, if they're flossing, they will know. So, because when you floss, you could feel something feel different. So um, just be really aware of what's going on. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about management of discomfort in orthodontics. I don't like to call it pain. I like to call it discomfort. And I'm going to tell you, having been a frequent flyer in the world of braces and aligners, not only putting them on and managing patients, but also having them myself, having kids who've had them, the pain is real. The pain is real. And if you are doing braces as an orthodontist or as a dentist, you must experience it. I don't care if you don't need it, you need it. You need to experience it because unless you can understand what the patient is going through, you cannot not only empathize, but you can't find a way to manage it. You know, you're going to, you're not going to be successful unless you can understand what they're going through. And there's going to be patients that breeze through it. And then there's going to be patients that are having a really rough time and everyone handles things differently, right? So Please do check out our blog on our website. It's straightsmilesolutions.com slash blog. Um, or you can go to about us in the tab and it's under there. And we actually go more into detail on how to manage this. But there's two main sources of discomfort. Okay. So the initial one is going to be basically the rubbing, having something new in your mouth, um, just contact, you know, from something new, like having a new pair of shoes and getting blisters. It's basically that. Um, that will go away in time as long as you're managing it. But if you don't manage it correctly, you can get infected and all kind of bad stuff, you know, like any other cut or sore. Um, the other type of discomfort, which is going to be a little bit more chronic and it'll come and go depending on what type of movements you're doing, power chain, um, space closure, you know, elastics is going to be the tooth movement discomfort. Now, younger kids probably aren't going to feel that as much aligner patients, who are maybe a lower force, maybe like Invisalign, won't feel that as much as maybe someone with a higher trim line, more steps per aligner. Um, braces patients are gonna feel it way more than aligner patients, et cetera, et cetera. If you're using lighter wires, it's gonna be better than if you're using heavier wires initially, taking smaller steps, you got it. So let's start initially first with the rubbing part. And we're going to be making some more videos on this using wax, um, using orthodots, stuff like that to manage the rubbing and discomfort. Make sure you're sending your patient home with a take-home kit. You can buy these eBay, Etsy, Amazon, but you can also buy the components from any ortho distributor. You can even just go to CVS. They sell the box. I think it's like six bucks and it has everything you need, the wax, stuff like that. Personally, for me, We'll go more over take-home kits later in a different video. But in terms of discomfort management, all you need is one or two containers of wax. And I really like Aura Base. There's a few other versions of Aura Base that's out there. Um, it's not like Aura Gel, two different things. Aura Gel is just a topical pain relieving gel. All that's gonna do is just make your mouth numb and nasty. That's all it's gonna do. You know, and it'll help for like two minutes. The Aura Base um, forms a little protective intraoral band-aid that actually will prevent, it'll stick. It may taste a little nasty and it's a little nummy, but it'll actually stick on the lip, the cheeks, wherever, and it'll act as an interoral Band-Aid. Almost if you could stick a Band-Aid inside your mouth, that's how it works. And that is a lifesaver. It really, really is. 
So that's one of my favorites is the Aura Base. Um, and there's a few other generic versions of that that are out there, but you're looking for one that forms a film or a stickable layer. And unless it says that, it doesn't do that. Very few do. So those two apply liberally. Some patients will go through five, six, 10 containers of wax. They're really cheap. Just give them to your patients when they ask for them or mail them if they need more. But patients can go get it at Walgreens, Walmart. They can order from Amazon. There's all different flavors of wax. There's some that are more silicone. There are some that are more beeswax. It's okay if you swallow it. It's okay if you eat with it. It's fine. Um, personally, I recommend putting it on liberally at least before bed. And if you know you're going to be talking because there's nothing worse than talking and having a catch on the cut, you know, and creating like a, a kit for your kids to take to school where they can put it on um, because they're going to be distracted if they're in discomfort, you know. So it is going to take maybe... And then eventually they need to start weaning themselves away from the wax and the aura base because you have to develop some calluses inside your mouth. And unless you kind of develop that resistance, you know, if you're always putting piles of wax on, you're not going to develop it. And, you know, so they should be weaned off of it within a month or so after starting ortho, unless they get new appliances or whatever. Um, in terms of the discomfort from the movement, it's going to be more chronic and it's going to reoccur about the same time that you have a new aligner every time you change an aligner or you get a tightening of your braces. So new aligners are usually every week or two. Tightening of braces is usually every four to 10 weeks, you know, and then it'll slowly get better and then you'll do it again. So if it's really becoming a problem, you should take the discomfort, whatever your MD or your physician tells you to take for pain. You do not need opioids. That's not necessary. It, matter of fact, that doesn't even work as well. Um, your regular Motrin or Tylenol should work fine. Sometimes orthodontists say don't take NSAIDs or Motrin because it can inhibit, dis inhibit movement. But personally, I, I, we've, I've used it for myself, never noticed any difference. I've used it on patients, never noticed any difference. So yes, if you're taking it every single day, the whole year or two of treatment, then maybe it'll be slightly slower treatment. Or if it's a patient that is complaining that they need more rapid movements, then maybe they'll notice a difference. But ultimately, you know, we need to make sure our patients are comfortable. And you can take the medication before your appointment if you need to. So in any case, let's talk a little bit more about dosages for medication. So of course, check with your physician. It depends on your body weight. Uh, depends on your metabolism. The main thing is you don't want to max out the recommended dosage per day. So they on the back of the bottle, it's going to say the recommended dosage. You don't want to max that out. So you need to allocate your medications accordingly and um, take them as needed. If you're really having acute discomfort, I recommend the pulse the pulse therapy, I call it pulse therapy, which is basically where you'll get up in the morning, you'll take your Motrin dosage. Motrin's normally taken every six to eight hours. Um, so if, let's say you're getting up at 6 a.m., you're going to take it again at, you know, um, 1 or 2 p.m. Um, but then you're going to take a Tylenol dosage around 9 or 10 a.m. in there. So as the Motrin starts to wear off, you've already got Tylenol on board. And you can take Tylenol and Motrin together. It doesn't make sense to take them at the same time because it just doesn't make sense. Um, but this is basically what they recommend for acute pain management, even um, for surgery patients, if you've ever had surgery and stuff like that, is pulsing your Motrin, your NSAIDs, with your acetaminophen, your Tylenol, and going every other. I recommend making your last dosage um, the Motrin before bed because it lasts eight hours. Um, if you wake up in the middle of night with discomfort, you can take your Tylenol, you know, and every other. But again, don't max out your dosage in a 24-hour period. I would not want to be taking Tylenol long term. It definitely has more liver toxicity. Um, and of course, you need to check with your physician because some people can't tolerate certain medications. Or if you have um, kidney failure, you don't want to necessarily be taking NSAIDs. If you have liver failure, you don't want to necessarily be taking Tylenol. So I'm saying this as if you are healthy. If you have any questions, talk to your general dentist as well as your physician about pain management. Usually, you only need to do that for the first day or two after your tightening or your new aligner, and then you're fine, you know? Um, but some people have to take it a little bit more. Hi, it's Dr. Amanda from Straight Smile Solutions. And I'm here today in my backyard to talk to you a little bit more about Orthodots and their um, Oral Vance Aligner Pontix. So let me show you what that looks like. Here is the Aligner Pontix. We're going to start with that today. 
So if you've ever seen my other videos about how to make a pontic, I was actually like pleasantly surprised how incredibly aesthetic this is. All you're gonna do is just open up the pouch, shove it in, just almost like it's wax. Use a micro brush to adapt it nicely at the gingival. Um, you wanna try it in the patient's mouth just to make sure it's not impinging at all. But it's really actually quite easy and it comes in a couple different shades, regular Vita shades. Um, this is just way nicer than the old Reliance method that I was using with the paint on, um, Pontic paint shade. Um, it's beautiful, actually. I'm actually really surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised. So I would highly recommend it. This is the Oro Vance product. Um, in addition, hang on. Sorry. I want to show you Orthodots, which is another sample that I got here from Orvance. These are can be used for braces or for aligners, if you can see them up close. They're like little, and they're individually packaged, so they're actually sterilized. Hang on. So you can see here, there's a model here. I'm going to show you how to put it on. So it's going to be in this individual package. You're just going to open it up. And these are completely sterile, which is great. Um, I mean, patient's going to be doing this at home. You're going to grab it. I'm going to go ahead and press it on the bracket. You can see it right here. Actually, that is really nice and adhesive. You can see how that is. So, and then you can also, oh wow, that sucker really stays on. You can also stick it on aligners, supposedly. I'm going to try it right now. A little windy out here. Sorry about that today. You know how it is when you've got kids at home and all kind of people at home social distancing and need to film something. So you gotta go where you gotta go. Okay, so here we go. I've never tried this before, so I'm literally winging this. But let's say, I mean, you shouldn't have sharp edges on aligners, but sometimes you do, you know, and the patients get bothered by it. So they said it's fixed right on. Um, I'm gonna say a no to that. I don't like it, but I think it seems great for braces. So to me, it doesn't seem like it's sticking very well to the, well, it stuck a little bit. I mean, it definitely sticks better than wax. So, whoop, came right off. Okay, well, blew off in the wind. So I'm gonna say that's a negative for aligners, but it's a positive for braces. And I definitely like their um, Pontic product. It was super easy, nothing to light cure, nothing to do, nothing to prep, just shove it in. So, I mean, in theory, honestly, I would probably just send home a package of the um, Orovance Aligner Pontix with your patient. It's, very, it's way more aesthetic than the Pontix thing and they can adapt it themselves the way they want to. Um, instead of you having to open up all their, um, their aligners um, and shove it in for them, it's easy. They can do it, so love it. All right, so thanks so much to Orovance for sending me the unboxing. I really appreciate it. Sorry for all the extra noise today, but, um, you get some idea of what we can do. Today we're going to talk about management of discomfort in orthodontic treatment. And this is just kind of my standard pain management protocol when patients are concerned, when they ask. Um, I don't normally go over it in major detail with patients unless that's something they seem anxious about um, or if they've called and explained that they're having discomfort. Usually I just tell them, you know, just take over the counter, you know, pain management as needed and I leave it at that but occasionally you'll have some special very sensitive patients who are going through some challenges some people are more sensitive to others with discomfort so this is kind of my pulsing pain management and I use this actually I learned this pain management when I had some surgery um, you know way back when they give you op opioids they don't give you opioids opioids anymore so this is um, what my physicians taught me and I've translated into dentistry and orthodontics as well, you know, as needed. So basically it involves using both NSAIDs and acetaminophen. So let's talk about what that means. So NSAIDs is a classification of um, pain relievers that are a certain type and they do, they help work a certain way on pain. And acetaminophen is another classification of pain relievers that works a different way on pain. So you can actually take them together 
and it actually works better when you take them together. But you don't take them at the same time. So I call this pulsing, and this is about like when I do it, but depending on what time you get up and go to bed, your schedule might be different. But I just want to explain it to you a little bit more. So an NSAID, what's in an NSAID? An NSAID would be Motrin, Advil, Aleve, Aspirin, okay? So that's those, and those are um, metabolized by your kidney. Only reason I'm telling you that is that you really should, before you get started on this, check with your physician, your family physician, um, or your general dentist, either way, um, to make sure you should be taking an NSAID or whatever. But I think best your own general physician. Um, they might say you shouldn't be taking NSAIDs and you should only take acetaminophens. And if so, this doesn't really apply, right? Um, acetaminophen is Tylenol. Tylenol is Tylenol, okay? So, um, Tylenol is metabolized by your liver. So again, if you're ever having liver problems, liver injuries, liver surgery, or you've, you've shown elevated liver enzymes in your blood work, then you might want to check with your physician to see if that is a good one for you. They might tell you to not take acetaminophen or Tylenol. So again, this video would not be applicable for you. I'm not going to go over max doses or how much doses to take because your dosage is going to depend on many different things including your size, your weight, um, your age, and many other things. So again, ask. I'm going to defer that to your physician. So I'm just going to talk about classifications. The main thing that you need to know what your dosage is, and you also need to know what the max dosage is for your medication. Some of these come in extra strength and regular, so it really depends on which one you're using. So I'm not going to mention numbers either. I'm just going to say a dosage, okay? Never, ever, ever take more than the max dosage in a 24-hour period. If this is done properly, you won't be doing that. Um, you should be under max dosage, and that's fine. And don't take any more than you need. So you maybe start with a lower dosage and try this, and then if you feel like you need to up it a little bit more, you can. And you should only be doing this for two or three days max. I usually recommend with aligners that you do this maybe right when you change to a new tray or maybe an hour before you change to a new tray and continue it for maybe two or three days after um, while you use your chewies and then you should be fine afterwards um, until you do a new one in braces start maybe an hour before your activation appointment for your orthodontic adjustment appointment and then continue it for a few days after the orthodontic adjustment appointment um, and then slowly you know wean yourself off, maybe skip a few dosages and see if you don't need it anymore. So obviously regular braces, you're gonna be seen every usually five to 10 weeks. Um, with aligners, you're gonna be changing aligners every one to two weeks. So it's a little bit more frequent, but your discomfort should be way less in aligners. You probably don't even need to do this in aligners, but there's always a few people who are very sensitive. And that's really gonna depend on the trim of the aligner, the thickness of the aligner, and how much movement they've programmed into each aligner. And that's not something I can tell by looking necessarily at your aligner. Um, anyways, so let's take you through a typical day. Let's say, you know, um, let's say I'm changing my trays in the morning, okay? And I'm getting up at 7 a.m. here. So 7 a.m. here, about to put on a new tray. And so I'm going to go ahead and eat my breakfast, brush floss, always eat food with especially NSAIDs, but I think always eat foods with anything. Then these should be taken on an empty stomach, especially NSAIDs. So, um, you know, take your NSAID dose. For me, my NSAID dose is going to be 400 milligrams of Motrin for my daughter, who's a little lighter than me. She's at 11. She takes 200 milligrams or one regular um, Advil. That's her dosage, okay? And then a few hours later, we're going to pulse it. So, in general, NSAIDs are going to last six to eight hours. So this NSAID should probably last till about early afternoon, right? But, you know, we don't want to get to the point when it starts wearing off, the pain's going to come back. We want to always block the pain. So that's why we take a dose of acetaminophen around here-ish, you know, um, that's your Tylenol dose. For me, that's going to be one tablet, which would be 500 milligrams. Um, there might be some extra drink tablets that are a little bit more, so... That's what I do. And then now we're into the afternoon and now it's about 2.30 and I'm taking my second NSAID dose, okay? And acetaminophen, by the way, lasts four to six hours. So it's gonna last and it's gonna kinda lose its potency somewhere around here as well. So Advil's gonna lose its potency here. 
Acetaminophen is going to lose its potency here. So it's shorter acting. So just so you know. Um, and if you're taking a leave, it's even longer acting. I don't find that one to be quite as effective for me, but it is longer lasting. So if, like if I was ever who wasn't able, I don't know where I'd be, where I couldn't take another dose. Maybe I was actively skiing or something, you know, <laughs> then maybe I'd do um, a leave instead. All right, so now it's the afternoon. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my next NSAID dose, and I'm going to take my next acetaminophen dose shortly after that. Now I should be good for a little while. So I should be good. We're at 3 p.m. Should be good for a few, few, few while. And I'm going to take another acetaminophen dose down here just as the NSAID is wearing off. And then an NSAID right before bed. And that's, that's it. So there you go. That's pain management in orthodontics. Hopefully that was helpful. Any questions, please let us know. StraightSmileSolutions.com. Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today I wanted to talk to you about gaps in your upper front teeth. You know you might have one. And if you have one, they're super frustrating, right? So if you have one or if you're a doctor who has a patient who has one, we call those phrenoms. And let me show you a picture real quick. Hang on. So it looks like this. This is a maxillary labial phrenum. The arrow is pointing right to it. Some people have a thick one, some people have a thin one, some people have a high one, some people have a low one. And if yours is thick and low, it might cause those front two teeth to gap apart. How frustrating is that? So it's really important that we talk about having that removed so that we can get a great orthodontic treatment. Hang on, I'm about to tell you more. All right, I'm back. Now that you've seen what a frenum looks like, let's talk about what we do about one. So if you have one like in the picture, it might be something that's forcing your teeth apart if it's low and thick, and it's something that you might be struggling to get corrected. Sometimes people have end up having braces multiple times or aligners multiple times in order to get this treated, and it keeps coming back. And I know from personal experience, both as a doctor and as a, as a patient who had one, it's very frustrating. So let's talk about what we do about it. Now, first of all, we need to identify it and make a plan. In general, what I do is I recommend as a doctor that you have that attachment severed or clipped. Not just a simple clipping though. You actually need to sever all the attachment down to the bone layer. It needs to be done by an oral surgeon or a periodontist preferably, but there are some general dentists who have experience doing it. I've always referred out to a specialist. Once you refer out, it's remember it's super critical that you don't do this at the beginning of treatment. You do it when your doctor recommends at the end of treatment, once the space is fully closed, because if you do it too early, the scar tissue can force the muscle fibers, can force the space back open again with scar tissue. And we don't want that because it might be irreversible at that point. So listen to your doctor and treatment timing is critical. But I recommend on the front end going to get a consult to find out how much this procedure would cost. Sometimes it's covered by insurance, but sometimes it's not. So it really depends on your insurance and on the doctor. Now there's two different ways this procedure is formed. One of them can be done with just a laser and one of them can be done with a scalpel and sutures. I recommend asking around to make sure your doctor has a laser because from experience, it's a way more comfortable experience and a procedure if you have the laser done. The traditional scalpel and sutures method is really quite uncomfortable. I can tell you from experience, my front lip looked like I'd been punched in the face for about a week. It was very painful. Um, you know, maybe not everyone reacts like that, but it's really not that fun. So um, I do recommend the laser. It's going to be much more comfortable. Yes, you'll probably need to be numbed up, but swelling should be very minimal and you probably won't need sutures afterwards. But I'm not a surgeon, so ask your surgeon if you have any questions. All right, that's pretty much it. I do recommend this procedure if you are a good candidate. That way you won't have to wear your retainer 24 hours the rest of your life. All right, take care. Don't hesitate to reach out and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that little red button down below because we'd love to see your questions and engagement and comments. All right, take care. Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda and I'm an orthodontist. I'm also the CEO of Straight Smile Solutions. We help dentists all over the world understand orthodontics better. We work with all systems, braces, appliances, and brands of aligners, and we support all systems and brands. This video will share content that is the property of Invisalign and Align technology. We've made this video upon request of 40,000 plus doctors, subscribers, and followers to help them achieve better outcomes with their Invisalign cases. We do not work for Align technology. 
All opinions expressed in this video are the opinions of Straight Smile Solutions and not Align Technology. Thank you to Align Technology for continuing to support us educating and helping their doctors and letting us share this video around the world through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, and all of our social media platforms. Together, we unite to make more smiles. If you have questions or concerns about this video, please contact us directly at www.straightsmilesolutions.com.